Hi, I welcome you to yet another video from Civil Era. This is Premjit and in this video we will be talking about some structural requirements for lift. Many of the civil engineering courses and training and even the civil engineering degree course itself conducted by the university has a lot of gaps in education and it doesn't cater to the practical requirement of a entry level engineer. So our blogs are always attempting to connect you with practicality and explain you something basic which is essential for a career in civil and structures. So in this video we are going to discuss some basic support requirement and basic lift pit requirement for a lift. We will also briefly discuss the different kinds of lift available in the market and which are popular in use. So there are different kinds of lift available. You have hydraulic lifts. Now hydraulic lift is nothing but an arrangement where you have a piston which is mounted on the floor and it lifts you up and then down. So the arrangement and more details about this piston arrangement is mentioned in the blog. So those who are seeing the video in YouTube can come to my blog. I will leave the blog details in the comments so you can have a look at our blog or you can see here the link to the blog post so both together will give you a good idea on what is the requirement in the video i am not explaining the entire points about the hydraulic lift because our idea is to discuss more on the lift pit and the machine room and the lift support requirement which will help you to understand the loading requirements but still I will briefly discuss this. Hydraulic lifts uses a pump to push oil into a cylinder which pushes a piston which in turn pushes the lift car up. So it's a piston arrangement which is used to push the lift car up. Now to come down a valve opens and oil is allowed to flow back into a reservoir using the gravitational force of the lift car. So it's pulled down or taken down by the gravitational force itself but it is done in a gradual manner so that the lift car is brought down in a slow pace so that's how the hydraulic lift works now there are different kinds of hydraulic lifts and some needs a machine room and some doesn't need a machine room the same way some of the hydraulic lift will need a lift pit and some of the types of hydraulic lift will not need a lift pit it just needs a recess in the floor so it is mounted on the floor so based on the requirement you can choose the type of the lift generally hydraulic lifts are useful for smaller heights maybe three to four floors of building where the vertical height required to be traveled is not very significant now if you read here i have mentioned it there are two types mainly hold and holdless. Now when you say hold hydraulic lift that means that it needs a lift pit and when you say hold less that means that you don't need a lift pit. Now it's very much important for the structural engineers and civil engineers to understand the differences and the requirement because then it will help you to coordinate with other stakeholders during a design development and reduce your abortive work or mistakes. Sometimes you may mistake some loads or sometimes even you may miss to combine a footing near the lift pit, you may end up in trouble. So it's always good even though it's the responsibility of the client and the planners to pass on the information to you. Many times people might take it granted that the information is known to you. So it's always required that you understand in your scheming stage, in your scheme development stage about the requirements that might crop up. So it's going to help you, this information is going to help you to coordinate in a better way and reduce the amount of body works and mistakes. And you have vacuum lifts. So this kind of lifts are more usable when you have a duplay or when you have an existing building where you want to add a floor and then with very minimal disturbance you want to connect them so it may be difficult to cut open the slab for stairs and a conventional lift might create issues like the requirement for lift pits and machine rooms and 
other things so a vacuum lift is really useful for an existing building and when you want to have connectivity between two floors say somebody buying an apartment in the upper level and then want to connect the ground and the first or the first and the second you don't need a lift pit or you don't need a machine room for these kind of lifts so this is very much weightless this is just like an aluminium or an alloy frame which is having a fiber or glass embedded in that and that forms the capsule and the vacuum is going to lift you up and the gravity is going to bring you down down you have a electronic mechanism to control the drop so that the vertical down movement is comfortable and smooth so you can read the blog as well to understand a bit more the weight and all that is given here it varies so you have to look at the manufacturer's catalog to get the final exact weight but generally it varies from 500 to 600 or 700 kgs which is very much not an abnormal load or a kind of load that needs a lot of special attention you can manage it with your normal level of detailing and design so it's very easy and even a bit of redistribution in your existing slab will allow you to have an opening in your slab and then connect the flow so it's a easy solution for connecting existing buildings even in new new place you use this only point to notice it is slightly expensive compared to other conventional lifts but the convenience and the aesthetics it produces is really going to be useful so coming to conventional lift here is what i want to explain a bit more on the structural requirement what is a lift pit why do we need it what is a lift room why do we need that so you can go through the blog as i said i will leave in the comment a link to the blog who are seeing in youtube and you can read it here so to explain this a bit better i have sketched a few things so you can see these this is the lift shaft that you can see here and this is your lift car so the lift car is guided by a guide rail which is fixed into the walls so generally the lift manufacturers will have a requirement of say 100 to 150 millimeter thickness for the wall if it is rc and 200 to 230 thickness if the wall is masonry so that will be a prerequisite for most of the lift manufacturers again you can look at the catalog that they provide and then arrive at the exact requirement so that is one requirement structural requirement for any lift the side wall has to be either rc in which case it can be used as a shear wall as well for your lateral load resistance if not rc it has to be a masonry with minimal 200 to 230 thickness so that is what most of the manufacturers would specify now horizontally there is going to be very very less lateral thrust because the lift car is going to be gravity movement downward and upward there is no lateral load coming on this because it's guided by a rail on the wall so there is going to be very minimal jerky movement so the manufacturer would be giving you the lateral thrust it may not be more than say 5 kilonewton or maximum 6 to 7 kilonewton as far as i remember you can always check a catalog and then confirm this so a brick wall will always have that capacity to resist that lateral thrust so it's not a big deal now coming to the lift pit arrangement now the lift pit is nothing but a box a bowl a complete rectangular box which is needed because if you look at the movement of the car at the floor level you have to get down so that's how you are going to use the lift so think about what happens at the ground level now when the lift reaches the ground level the lift car will have some mechanical systems underneath the lift car so that will need to go down when you reach the ground level so if this is your ground level and you have ground here this mechanical things which are under the car needs to go down so generally that will be around 1500 millimeter that much distance will be required so that's why we need a lift pit so if this is your ground level when your lift reaches here people has to get down here at this level so this will be the door of the lift now that 
mechanical things whatever arrangement you have needs to go down so that's the reason you need a box here down which will take care of that and it should be watertight and you also have a earth pressure here because you have earth here so this earth should not come inside as well so this is generally rc even if you don't have a shear wall in the building generally the lift pit from the base to the ground level will be in rc so that it can retain this earth as well as any water ingression so this should be watertight there will be waterproofing requirement and also structural requirement to ensure that this lateral pressure from the soil here is going to be taken care so this distance is generally going to be 1.5 to 1.7 all depends on the type of the lift and the manufacturer so again this information will be available in the lift manufacturer's catalog so here this is taken from a catalog so here they have given the entire requirement you will also have a shock absorbing mechanism here in the event of failure of the lift so that also will be there so that's the requirement of a lift pit so here you can see the guide rails you can see the hoisting ropes you can see the lift car so at the floor level people will get down and at the ground level when the lift car reaches you need a lift pit to accommodate the mechanical system so in this case it's here this is the probably this is your ground level something like that now if you want to see a proper detail of a lift pit you can see here it will be something like this the mat so you will have top and bottom reinforcement and your your section would look something like this so you will need a side wall and a base like this for accommodating the pit so here the side wall can terminate here if you don't want the shear wall going upward for your seismic resistance that's a completely different topic now if you want only the lift pit you can do it up to the ground this is rc the remaining can be masonry if you are designing your building for seismic resistance which you have to do in any case and if you are relying on the shear wall then you can extend your lift wall upward as well this is a decision taken after understanding the scheme and the requirement so I will not be discussing about the shear wall in this video at all. So that's how the lift pit is going to be and that's the requirement for the lift pit. So there is no much load on the lift pit apart from the side wall subjected to a lateral pressure so it should be designed as a retaining system. The base also needs to take that load the moment coming from the side wall in addition to that many times if you look at the plans this is a lift here requirement now you have a column here you have a column here and as per the scheme the next column is here so in this particular case sometimes since you need a lift pit here anyways you cannot give an isolated footing here because this will clash with that mostly here this also might clash with that mostly so most of the footings nearby might clash together so finally you may end up with a combined footing so this is something which structural engineers should look into because there is no point in saying that okay this lift bit i will have to take it 1700 down and i will give a lift bit like this and maybe the other one this particular footing is say 1.5 by 1.5 it is not clashing with that so i will take it but as per the soil report i need it only at 1.5 meter so this will not work because there is only a very minimal distance between this it's always better you have a common base for all the foundations so in such situations it all depends i might take a combined footing like this and this one pad will serve two purpose that will be a part of the lift pit base as well as the load from the columns are going to be carried onto this and then this will be like a combined footing so all these are careful considerations you will have to take based on your scheme and your project so all this you can gain only by doing projects one or two or more it comes by experience it cannot be explained over a video but then these are things that you need to understand and then plan your work and plan your practice considering all this because these are all real life situations which you are going to encounter when you start working so it's better you get trained in all these on real projects and learn these stuff so there are many more things similar to that which i will not be explaining right now but then 
you need to understand that there would be many more things like that now coming to the machine room same way when you come to the top your lift will be to a pedestal either in steel or arc then the weight of that is going to come onto that so it is like suspending from the top same way there will be an additional hoisting onto the top of the lift machine room so you can see here there is a hook wherein you are additionally hoisting the lift onto that for additional safety so that minimum machine room height all that will be specified by the manufacturer and architects should generally give that in their drawing as well even the load of the lift will be mentioned in your lift catalog so whichever lift you are using you can refer the catalog generally a range of 10 kilo newton per meter square is going to be enough and many lift like Otis specify 10 kilo newton per meter square for a mid-rise apartment kind of a setup the lift in such buildings generally they recommend 10 kilo newton per meter square on the roof slab so that will take care of the load if you want exact you can get the point load from the manufacturer and then apply as a point load or a couple of point loads as it is so you need to look at the supporting arrangement if it is a point load or not then based on that you can apply that on the slab so that's it i wanted to explain in this video the different kinds of lifts available and its supporting system and the necessity of the lift pit so thank you for watching hope you enjoyed this video